Hello people, in this video, let's look at this book ENT by Mohan Bhansal, Bansal. Actually, this is the essentials book. There is a bigger book which is diseases of ear, nose and throat. But this is enough for MBBS. <coughs> so, let's get started. The contents. So, as usual, you have ear, nose, right? And then, oral cavity, pharynx, larynx, neck, operative procedures and instruments, okay, so that is the content. This book starts off with history taking, <clears throat> so it might be very useful clinically clinical wise right so they're telling you you have to take the personal particulars right then the chief complaints hopi past drug history history of allergy personal family history of immunization then you will physically examine then local examination you will do <coughs> ent examination right provisional clinical diagnosis then differential diagnosis investigations etc final diagnosis treatment etc Let's get started with the exact subject, anatomy of ear. So ear, they are talking about the auricle. What is auricle? It's the pinna, right? Yeah, it's also called as pinna. External features of auricle. So here they are talking about the helix, the anti-helix, spine of helix, incisura terminalis, tragus, isthmus, Tail of helix, concha, antitragus. Tragus is here, antitragus. Yeah. Here they are showing the tympanic membrane. In this book, they have given you some important questions. Right? So this looks like, which of the following statements are not true for external auditory canal? So like, are there answers also to this? Let's look. Okay, they have given you a lot of question and answers. That's nice. And yes, there are answers. So what is the answer to that question? B and D. So let's just go there. Which of the following statements are not true? So not true for external auditory canal. B and D are not true. So the others are true. Behiscence may be seen in outer cartilages canal. It is 24 millimeter in length, shorter than eustachian tube. Bony EAC does not contain ceruminous glands. Or hair follicles, acid, pH, pH is acidic. Okay. Physiology of hearing and vestibular system. So, how exactly, what is the mechanism of hearing? What makes us differentiate so many frequencies, etc. Right? This chapter has some pearls and nuggets to refresh your knowledge. That's nice, right? Abducent cranial nerve 5, fifth cranial nerve. The ophthalmic division is V1. Dysmetria. First pharyngeal arch, glossopharyngeal nerve, horizontal gaze, accessory nerve, ataxic gait, the most common cause in chronic alcohol abuse. Okay, the most common cause is chronic alcohol abuse. What of ataxic gait? But why is that here? Oh, because ear is doing balance and if there is a bad gait, ataxic gait, it could be alcohol. Chapter 4 is Otologic Symptoms and Examination. So, Otoscope. Do you feel like here there should have been photo of the Otoscope? Do they have it here? Otoscopy Examination, yes. Hearing Evaluation, that is hearing test. So, you will do what tests you will do. Tuning for tests, etc. Right? Look at this, different types of hearing tests. You have the traditional screening test, the watch test, the finger friction test, voice test. What is this finger friction test? It is a, a rough but quick method of screening. Rubbing or snapping the thumb and a finger close to the patient's ear gives rough idea of patient's ear. Thumb and finger near it. Okay. Continuing here, they are talking about tuning fork tests. You have the Rene test, Weber test, 
absolute bone conduction swab act test audiometric tests you have like pewton audiometry speech audiometry impedance audiometry evoked brain stem evoked response audiometry beta so many tests are there and oae auto acoustic emissions here they are talking about the clinical diagnosis of causes of conductive hearing loss if a person has conductive hearing loss tympanic membrane whether it's not visible so there could be wax or <coughs> foreign body or otitis externa tumor something external abnormal external ear canal right because you're not able to see the tympanic membrane atresia tympanic membrane if it is visible and still the person has conductive hearing loss then there could be problem where tympanic membrane abnormal normal tympanic membrane means you go deeper probably some problem in the middle ear isn't it and finally if the abnormal tympanic membrane is there then it could be otitis media no mobility of tympanic membrane again otitis media otitis media barotitis media again otitis media here also otitis media different types so we are in this chapter 6 where they are talking about the otosclerosis this is the audiogram in otosclerosis where you can see here there is a notch at 2000 in the bone conduction right <clears throat> this is karhart's notch coming to sensory neural hearing loss right here they will talk to you about the common causes like you can have um, new, um, genetic cause meningitis labyrinthitis something to do with the nerve trauma some ototoxic drugs like streptomycin gentamicin tumors so many systemic disorders miscellaneous and here they have given you a flow chart to diagnose the sensory sensory neural hearing loss cause right so here you have acute onset gradual onset trauma history no trauma history is it asymmetrical or symmetrical so here they're telling it is could be ototoxic could be autoimmune could be a tumor could be noise exposure old age press bicuses then they are talking about hearing aids cochlear implants so types of hearing aids body worn behind the ear in the ear in the canal etc then they talk a lot of diseases of the ear okay like csom etc then they are talking about vertigo this is the dix halpike test here they are talking about benign paroxysmal positional vertigo bppv facial palsy so facial nerve disorders then tumors of the ear and cerebro cerebellopontine angle this chapter here they are talking about the carcinoma left middle ear left ear <clears throat> there's a carcinoma in middle ear and the eac external auditory canal so guys um, we have finished the ear let's move on to the nose part so anatomy of the nose as usual they are talking about the c shaped nose here so that is something to do with the septal deviation is it here is this osteomedial complex see this diagram you will have to draw in the exam if they ask you osteomedial complex cotyl test isn't it this one <clears throat> cotyl test external nasal valve and this is the cotyl test inset shows internal nasal valve that is the internal nasal valve external nasal valve some tables given in this textbook differences between anterior nasal bleeding posterior nasal bleeding epistaxis right differences then they are talking about the disease of uh, diseases of external nose and vestibule here is a furuncle rhino sinusitis earlier it was just sinusitis now it is rhino sinusitis including the nose chapter 25 is allergic and nasal non allergic that is nothing but basomotor rhinitis as such this book looks good very neat chapter 26 on nasal septum disorders tumors of nose and paranasal sinuses look at this you can have um, benign and malignant and they have put an intermediate in middle benign you will have to know which one angiofibroma what is the star indicate let's see tumors are seen in children oh okay <coughs> tumors are seen in children which are those let's look at the important ones here angiofibroma and this is the nose right nose yes 
what is this fibrous dysplasia we are seeing here the disfigurement of face due to the fullness on the right side of nose what is this that they have marked what is this line ongren's line this line from the medial canthus to the angle of mandible what kind of incision is this weber ferguson's incision for maxillectomy okay starts at the upper lip filtrum on operative side and goes up to the columella this is the columella it continues around the margin of the ala up the lateral border of the nose near the medial canthus of the eye it turns laterally in a round fashion to go 5 mm below the lower lip margin okay so after nose they are moving on to oral cavity let's look at that so anatomy of oral cavity we still have half the book to cover let's see how much we can we'll go fast oral cavity this is locked jaw trismus in a patient of masticator space abscess so he has an abscess in the masticator space is this the one neoplasms of salivary glands parotid gland swelling tail of parotid gland what is the tail of parotid gland where is it the tail of parotid gland so tumors of salivary glands we have already looked at this kind of thing in pathology right pleomorphic adenoma warthen's tumor remember all this but when it comes to oral cavity see what you saw now was the salivary glands but now here you are seeing the neoplasms of the oral cavity here they are talking to you about the benign conditions like papilloma pleomorphic adenoma same name came there also right <coughs> malignant don't have any specific name is it all squamous cell carcinoma kaposi sarcoma hemangioma tongue Yeah, it's red in color. Hemangioma tongue. Yes, we are moving on to the anatomy and physiology of pharynx and esophagus. So they are covering pharynx and esophagus here. After that, the last one will be larynx, isn't it? Okay. Pharynx, sagittal section, pharyngeal wall, coronal section. Esophagus, the constrictions of the esophagus. You have the upper esophageal sphincter, lower esophageal sphincter. This looks like a nice photo. When you look into the mouth of the person, you will see soft palate with uvula, posterior pharyngeal wall. This is the tongue. Posterior tonsillar pillar means what? This one. It's posterior tonsillar pillar, palatine tonsil, anterior tonsillar pillar. So, if you want to know what the pillars are, this is the anterior tonsillar pillar. This is the posterior tonsillar pillar, and looks like in between they have marked the tonsil. Nice, right? So tumors of oropharynx here they are showing you the carcinoma of the right tonsil involving anterior tonsillar pillar okay that makes sense now you know why you looked at all those anatomical structures in the mouth in disorders of esophagus here they have shown you the foreign body is it fish bone can you spot it the fish bone let me see they are saying it's that the level of c4 is this the one so many conditions in the esophagus isn't it they are talking about nutcracker esophagus cardiac achalasia so many things zenker's diverticulum guys so guys the uh, last uh, topic is the larynx you can see because um, here ear nose throat right so here you have covered ear nose we finished the pharynx esophagus now coming to the larynx so larynx here they are talking about you uh, talking to you about the cartilages of uh, larynx so you have the epiglottis thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage this these three you can see from front and behind you will have what the arytenoid cartilage the corniculate cartilage and you should also have the cuneiform right they also seem to have included a cadaveric larynx sagittal section showing you the arytenoid cartilage here so this is posterior so this will be anterior where you have what thyroid cartilage marked here okay 
some interesting things here like some self evaluation exercises you can evaluate all yourself right the examples of elastic cartilages are thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage greater parts of arytenoids none of the above which one example of elastic cartilages answer is none of the above so if i'm not wrong it is actually the epiglottis right which is elastic see if you have read the book properly here they had already explained that there are three um, paired so wait there is hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, elastic cartilage, the epiglottis, the corniculate, the cuneiform and the tip of the arytenoids. All these are elastic. So here in the question they had given, they have not given cuneiform and corniculate and they have not given tip of arytenoids. They have given the greater part of arytenoids. So it is none of the above. They have given some true or false um, questions. You can just mark hyaline cartilages do not undergo calcification. Let's look at this. Have they given the answers? True, false? Oh yeah, they have given true, false like that. What was the question number for that? Question number 7. Hyaline cartilages do not undergo calcification. Is that true? False. So that means they undergo calcification. Again, if you have book, read the book correctly here, you can see hyaline cartilage. They have explained here the ossification which begins first in the thyroid at the age 25 years. So that is it will ossify. Right, hyaline cartilages which undergo ossification. It's written here already. So if you read, you can answer. This book also has some problem-oriented cases. Spot diagnosis. A neonate female child presents with unilateral parotid swelling, etc. There's no other development. The swelling increases, etc. What is this one? Where do you get the answer? Oh, it's your hemangioma. I kind of like this. Then you have the benign tumors of larynx. Then obviously you have the malignant conditions of larynx. Here they are talking about management of impaired airway. This is a very important topic. Okay, like uh, tracheostomy, tracheotomy. So there is just one S difference, is it? Tracheostomy, tracheotomy and I think both are the same, right? That's what they mean by slash here. So here they are showing you tracheostomy tube inserted and secured by tapes. Finally, they are coming to the neck, guys, lymph nodes, lymph nodes of head and neck. Look at this one here, the second one, tuberculous cervical lymph adenitis. This is a very nice case, right? Exactly something like this I have seen on a patient, on a boy who is 13 year old. This looks like that. Okay, let's read this. Unilateral painless firm smell swelling in the left submandibular region of a young adult female mimicking submandibular gland swelling. Excessional biopsy shows evidence of tuberculosis. Wow, nice. So while we are here, they are covering thyroid also. Deep neck, uh, deep neck infections means what? Yeah, here they are showing you retropharyngeal abscess. This one is Ludwig's angina. Submental and submandibular tender swelling in a 20 year old lady. Finally, uh, they are covering some operation surgeries. This is some procedure flexible esophagoscopy. Note the biopsy forceps in the hand of assistant. This is the assistant? No, this is not. Okay, where are the forceps? Where do you think it is? Is it this one or this one? This book is also covering the instruments. Here are all the instruments that you would use in an adenoid tonsillectomy. Draphin suspension apparatus, two bipods. That is A. Where is A? Yeah, this one, this one. A. Draphin suspension apparatus, two bipods. Some radiology also they have covered here. X-ray mastoid left normal. That's good. Now always give a normal photo, then we can compare. I think this book is nice because you know who will label everything and explain so well. CT scan of oropharynx, skin, platysma, fat, mandible, genioglossus, mylohyoid, tongue, submandibular gland, external jugular vein, internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein, vertebral artery of in foramen. Wow, in the foramen transversarium. That's nice. I think a CT scan of like this with the labelings will really help. They're talking also about the radiotherapy and chemotherapy and the laser surgery, cryosurgery. Looks like they have dedicated a chapter on HIV. That's it, guys. We have covered this book.
Essentials of Ear Nose Throat by Mohan Bhansal. Hope you have liked this video. If you find this book useful, you can buy this. Otherwise, uh, you can also check out Dhingra ENT. That's all for now, guys. Bye bye.